Our today's topic is Skinner's Reinforcement Theory. The reinforcement theory, based on Skinner's operant conditioning theory, says that behavior can be formed by its consequences, Gordon, 1987. Positive reinforcements, for example praise, appreciation, a good mark, grade, trophy, money, promotion or any other reward can increase the possibility of the rewarded behavior's repetition. If a student gets positive verbal feedback and a good grade for his test, this reinforcement encourages the performance of the behavior to recur. If the teacher doesn't tell precisely what he expects, then the positive reinforcements can drive the behavior closer to the preferred. For example, when a student who is usually late to class gets positive feedback when he arrives on time, the student becomes more and more punctual. Positive reinforcement motivates to get the anticipated reinforcement of required behavior. We use negative reinforcement when we give a meal to a hungry person if he behaves in a certain manner, way. In this case the meal is a negative reinforcement because it eliminates the unpleasant state, hunger. Contrary to positive and negative reinforcement, punishment can be undesired reinforcement, or reinforce undesired behavior. For example, if a student is always late to class and thus he gets negative verbal feedback and also always has to tidy up the classroom at the end of the day, in this case the undesirable behavior is reinforced with an undesirable reinforcer. The punishment declines the tendency to be late. According to the theory, positive reinforcement is a much better motivational technique than punishment because punishment tries to stop undesirable behavior and does not offer an alternative behavior creates bad feelings, negative attitudes toward the activity, and the person who gives the punishment suppresses behavior, but does not permanently eliminate it. Once certain behavior has been conditioned through repetitive reinforcement, elimination of the reinforcement will decline the motivation to perform that behavior. Therefore it is better not to give a reward every time. Reinforcement in the workplace usually takes place on a partial or irregular reinforcement schedule, when reward is not given for every response. The reinforcement theory is included in many other motivation theories. Reward must meet someone's needs, expectations, must be applied equitably, and must be consistent. The desired behavior must be clear and realistic, but the issue remains, which reinforcements are suitable and for which person?